So in this lecture we are going to talk about the very first introduction to conformal mapping. <coughs> we are already familiar with the type of mapping. Let's say we have some number or a series of numbers in the Z plane and we know how to define a map. Let's call that map with F of Z and we know that this is a map that will transfer the inputs of the z-plane as the output of the w-plane so this was one sort of mapping and now what we want to do is that we want to discuss the special type of mapping that is known as conformal mapping so the motivation behind this that means one of the motivation would be to solve the Laplace's equation that was given by this. To solve this kind of equation uh, one can adopt many methods but it turns out that if this equation is defined in a domain then the solution would be greatly simplified if we could map the domain into the upper half plane or into a unit disk and this is where we will use the tools from conformal mapping. So let us uh, first try to look at things in the following way is that we define a map that is given by W is equals to F of Z like this but we haven't really specified what type of mapping this is that means whether this f of z is analytic or it's non-analytic and so on and this is where we will put in some restrictions and we will see that we will get some very interesting outcomes so the first thing we need to do is that we need to say that okay if i have some function f of z and we assume that this function f of z is analytic and non-constant in a domain d of the complex z plane so this f of z is analytic and non-constant in a domain D of the Z plane or the complex Z plane whatever you want to call it if this is the case and for any Z belongs to this domain that means any point inside this domain if f prime of Z is not zero that means we have a non-zero value for our derivative at that point then this mapping is conformal then this mapping by this mapping we mean that w equals to f of z is conformal which means that it preserves the angles between two differentiable arcs so this is something new that means it's a piece of new information so let me highlight this thing with a different color that is it preserves the angles between two differentiable arcs so what does this new piece of information tells us let's try to draw them let's say this is the Z plane and this is the W plane and let's say I have two curves let's say one of them like this and I can have another curve like this and let's say this is a point where they intersect and I can draw two tangent lines like this 
small tangent lines and now what we want to do is that we want to map this whole picture over here into the W plane and let's also denote the angle between these two curves I mean sorry these two tangent lines is theta on the Z plane if we map this picture on the Z plane to the W plane then again we can get two curves like this and let's say this is now the intersecting point and if you draw two tangent lines like this then this theorem tells you that the angle would still be theta so this is what preservation of angle means so this is known as the preservation of angles now how do we prove it we prove it using the following way at first we will try to look at what happens to these tangent lines as they get mapped via this w equals to f of z relation that is the first thing we want to see because if we can analyze what happens to the angle or this argument let's say this is the argument some theta 1 what happens to this theta 1 then by a similar analysis we would be able to find what happens to this theta 2 and from there we can actually see that what will actually happen and let's call this theta 1 prime in the mapped frame and theta 2 prime like this okay so the first thing we want to see how do these tangents rotate under this mapping criteria so what we can do is that we know that if you have a curve on a complex z plane we can use some parameter to represent that curve so a curve on z plane can be parameterized using some let's call that parameter s parameter as z equals to i mean sorry z of x it should be z of s because we are representing the curve in terms of the parameter so this would mean that x and y both of them can be written in terms of s circle would be a very good example because if you take theta as a parameter keeping the radius constant then you can easily show that this equation would uh, let's say this equation leads to a circle then you can easily show that you can represent this in terms of a theta right in using the polar representations r cos theta for x and r sin theta for y so there that is one of the examples so if this is true we are representing a curve with some parameter then we can imply the chain rule and write it like this this is not actually a chain rule but though it doesn't look like one but indeed it is because, because this is like an implicit differentiation because at the end of the day this x will come in terms of s y will come in terms of s so we can write it as i dy of s as this why we are doing this it will be clear in a moment now what was our mapping criteria that was w was written as f of z right now since z itself is coming in terms of s the parameter and we are taking some function of z and z is coming in terms of s so from there we can say that w will also come in terms of s like this a simple example would be to write w as z square S and let's say z is income uh, z is coming in terms of s plus one like this and you just put s plus one over here and you can easily see that w is also coming in terms of s 
and after this what we want to do is that we want to take the derivative at some point but what is that point that point would be some s naught that means we are fixing the value of some parameter at a certain point so if you look at our picture and if you look at this intersection points though this is the z plane in terms of x and y's and let's say this is w plane in terms of u and v this point x0 y0 would correspond to some s0 all right so we take the derivative of w with respect to s in some parameter point denoted as s0 now we can use the chain rule and this will be nothing but f prime of z of s0 or you can keep the s there intact that's your wish and this would be dz by ds right this is also meaning that you are evaluating the derivative at s is equals to s0 and let's call z of s0 as z0 that means this is just x0 plus iy0 or x0 plus ix iy0 so why are we doing all this why are we taking derivatives because remember our in our definition of the conformal mapping we are saying that first we are taking some domain and then we are taking a particular point inside the domain and we are arguing that the derivative is not zero and this will enable us in the analysis of the angles because these tangents are related with the derivative itself so now since f prime of z naught is not equals to zero since f prime that is the derivative given on that particular point z naught that belongs to the point given by the s not para s not point of the parameter and z prime of s not which is also not zero okay it follows that this guy over here that means dw by ds at point s is equals to s not which is written as w prime of s not this is also not equals to zero right so what we can do is that we can write this line which we label as equation one we can rewrite one as w prime of s zero is equals to f prime of z naught z prime of s naught right but you have to be careful about uh, doing these derivatives because this f prime is telling you that this is a derivative with respect to z while this z prime is actually telling you this is a derivative with respect to s all right so these are the things you need to be careful about now consider this the argument of this w prime at this point is zero this should be equals to argument of f prime of z naught plus argument of z prime of s naught why because if you have two complex numbers written as z1 z2 and you take the argument of it this is just argument of z1 plus argument of z2 and this is easily provable as you saw in the first week's lecture that if you just represent them in polar form the arguments add up all right so what does this tell us what does this equation tell us let's say this is equation 2 S you see that this w prime is actually the tangent uh, at the w plane right this is what it gives you because if you recall from real variable calculus that once you find the derivative at a particular point you can then use that derivative to find out the angle that a particular line is making with the positive x-axis this is what is exactly happening over here so this w prime that means the argument of this w prime is actually telling you that 
the angle that this tangent let's say one of these tangents made in this w plane is equals to the angle it made on the positive i mean sorry angle it made with the positive x axis in the z plane over here plus there is this derivative guy this is an extra piece okay so that means let's say we are analyzing for this curve I mean sorry this tangent and let's say it made an angle of theta 2 in the z plane and in the w plane it made an angle theta 2 prime so according to this analysis theta 2 prime would be theta 1 plus the argument of f prime of z naught that means it's getting rotated by this amount all right and once you consider this the rest of the analysis that conformal mapping preserves angle is pretty straightforward is that this is an analysis for one of the curves so as you can see I draw two curves that intersect at some point and that point is given by z0 in the z plane it is represented with the parameter by s0 right so you can do a similar analysis for the other curve and for the other curve let's say we are writing the other curve as not uh, w equals to but let's say some g so similar analysis would yield the result that this g of s naught since they are intersecting intersecting at that point z naught which is represented with the parameter s naught so this will be equals to f prime of z naught and here you will have a z prime of s naught right and if you want to distinguish that this is actually for the second curve you can always put as z1 over here okay and now again you can take the arguments of this guy argument of this whole thing would be equals to argument of f prime of z naught plus argument of z1 of s naught and then if you um, call it equation 3 and you subtract one from the other so you would have argument of g of s0 minus argument of w prime s0 equals to argument of z1 s0 minus argument of z prime s0 right so this is the uh, if you write in terms of theta so theta 2 prime was this so theta 1 prime oh sh sorry this should be theta 2 and theta 1 prime would be given by theta 1 plus argument of this the same quantity and you can easily see from here that theta 1 prime minus theta 2 prime is equals to theta 1 minus theta 2 that means the angle between them is now conserved so this is one of the critical properties of this conformal transformations and it turns out that not only conformal transformation preserves the angle between the this differentiable arcs that is written in terms of w prime that is a very small segment of the tangent right or a small segment of the curve whatever you want to call it it also magnifies the points near that z naught point what i mean is that if you want to write it as a theorem it says that if our f of z is analytic this is analytic and it is non-constant over some domain d and 
for any point z belongs to d where f prime of z is not equals to zero just like we defined conformal transformation this transformation w equals to f of z this will magnify distances near another point z naught by the factor of the derivative of the f at z point that means that if you have a point z naught then under this transformation distances near z0 we are taking a particular point will magnify magnify by a factor f prime of z naught and there will be a modulus this will be the factor and this is pretty easy to prove note the fact that since for any point that is the point of interest the derivative at that point is not zero we can say that okay this is not zero right so this is something which is not zero then how do we write the derivative at that particular point what we do is that we write this derivative as limit of z goes to z naught f of z minus f of z naught z minus z naught right and now I we want to see the modulus of it so if you take the modulus on both sides and use the property of the modulus you will see that this breaks down into z minus z naught modulus and f of z minus f of z naught modulus of this thing right so what do you have finally what you have is if you take this modulus of z minus z naught on the left hand side you'll have z minus z naught f prime of z naught this limit z goes to z naught and f of z minus f of z naught right so we are almost done now if we picture it in the z plane and the w plane this z minus z naught is a small differentiable uh, okay let us not call it differentiable right now it's a small segment in the z plane right and this f of z and f of z naught these are two points in the w plane so this is a small segment why am i calling it a small segment because the z naught would go to uh, sorry the z would go to z naught so that's why i'm calling this a small segment so what this equation is telling you is that the segment on the w plane is equals to some factor this is the factor times distance on the z plane between these two points so that's why we're calling it that it gets magnified all right so if this segment looks like this it will be a bit bigger or it might shrink down as well so these are the two key properties of a conformal transformation or a conformal mapping now uh, i want to end this lecture with a very simple example is that how we can uh, get used to the ba basic algebras of this conformal mapping one example would be let's say that we are defining some transformation 2z plus 1 by z something like this and what we want to show is that it maps the exterior of a unit circle onto the exterior of an ellipse ellipse which is given by u by 3 whole square v square equals to 1 so that means that if you have a circle on the z plane and the exterior points so let me 
draw the interior with some red because this is not we are considering we are considering the points that are exterior to this circle and this problem tells us that if you define a map like this on the w plane this will be map to exterior of an ellipse all right so let's try to solve it so we can write z as so this is the solution z as x plus i y and we just put it over here and see what happens so z is equal to 2x plus i y then you have 1 upon z that is 1 by x plus i y right but we don't want to keep a complex number in the denominator so we write it as 2x plus 2i y plus x squared plus y squared and then you have a x minus i y like this and if you want to keep the real and the imaginary parts together you can do that from here but i won't do it right now and there is another thing that you can use to simplify your life is that you see that it's calling uh, it's telling you the problem that is this is a unit circle and you are considering all the points exterior to that circle all right so at the boundary of the circle you have x square plus y square equals to 1 this is the boundary for the exterior you actually have something like this x square y square greater than 1 because the boundary itself will be an exterior and for interior you will have something like this less than 1 so you can use this condition over here and simplify this thing a little bit so this will give you actually 2x plus 2iy plus x minus iy and then you do the algebra this is just telling you this is 3x minus sorry plus iy and this is what w in terms of x and y right but w itself is a function of complex variables on the w plane so you can write it as u plus iv that's what we are interested in that we want to see what x and y turns out in the uv plane so u should be written as 3x and y should be sorry not y it should be v and v should be written as y right so what you have is x equals to u by 3 and y equals to v now the exterior region exterior region are uh, of the unit circle circle is given by x square plus y square is equal greater than 1 since this is a unit circle and we you can just now paste this copy uh, the values of x and y into uh, over here and you will have u by 3 whole square plus v square which is equal greater than 1 and this is just an equation of an ellipse right because if you take the uh, saturated case where this whole square plus v square equals to 1 this will represent an ellipse and the greater than symbol will actually mean the points outside the ellipse so this will be it for today and in the next lecture we're going to see some conformal mappings where this restriction of the derivative not being zero will be lifted. Thank you.